Jayam Vishnu Pavashi Labhakti Pavan Janaga Maharaj Ki Jayam. Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Atha Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Rana Krishna Paran Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishkam Vitam Shri Om Ajnana Timurandasya Ajnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshura Militam Yena Tasma Shri Guru Venama Gorva Bistam Supurakam Gurgana Rasi Shasambhushitam Chintya Chintya Samasta Vedanipanam Shri Rupa Patanugam Govinda Abhidam Ujvalam Varatanum Bhaktyan Vidam Sundaram Mande Vishwagurun Shah Divyad Bhagavat Prem Noe Pranam Devam Divyatanum Suchandavaranam Balarka Chelanchitam Sandrananda Puram Sarekavaranam Vairagya Vidyam Budim Sri Siddhanta Nidhim Subhakti Lasitam Saraswatanam Varam Bandetam Shubaram Mareka Sharanam Nyashishvara Sridharam Mansha Kopataru Bhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhyavacha Patita Nam Pavinibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Namo Mahabharanyaya Krishna Prima Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gauratavise Nama so reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, The Hidden Treasure of the Sweet Absolute, with translation and commentary by Srila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, a translation into English by, uh, by um, Swarupananda Prabhu. So this is chapter 15. Purushottama Yoga, the Supreme Person. Shri Bhagavan Vanuvacha Urdva Mulam Adashakam Ashwatam Prahur Avyayam Chandam Shi Yashaparnani Yastam Veda Savedavit. The Supreme Lord said, It is said in the scriptures that this material world is like a people tree. Roots up, branches down, endless yet transient. Its leaves represent the nourishing verses of the Vedas. One who knows this tree is a knower of the Vedas. So, the Supreme Lord said, It is said in the scriptures that this material world is like a people tree. Roots up, branches down, endless yet transient. Its leaves represent the nourishing verses of the Vedas. One who knows this tree is a knower of the Vedas. And that's a name of a kind of tree, people tree. So the roots of the tree of the world are said to face upwards. Its, its root cause is the highest plane. It is manifested by the potency of the Supreme Lord. However, it is rooted in aversion to the Lord. Its branches are said to face downward, since according to the laws of karma, all species of life, from the highest to the lowest, branch out from it. It is known as an ashwatthama tree. The word ashwata, ashwata means ephemeral, or yet, or that which does not remain in the same state for even a day. Yet it is endless in the sense that it, is con it constantly appears in the natural flow of cause and effect. The leaves of the tree represent the fruitive verses of the Vedas, Karmakanda. As the leaves of a tree nourish and beautify it, these verses similarly encourage and illuminate the world. The external potency of the Lord, Maya, is eternal, and it manifests this world. Maya is eternal and yet it manifests this world. Yet the world itself is, a perish is perishable inasmuch as it again becomes unmanifest. Although the fruit of verses of the Vedas provide its nourishment, their underlying purpose is rather to enlighten the conditioned souls to take shelter of the Supreme Lord who is transcendental to the, to this, to the mundane. Thus, one who knows these fundamental principles is a knower of the true essence of the Vedas. And so, I'm going to 
read this verse commentary again. The roots of the tree of this world are said to face upwards. Its roots, it, its root cause is the highest plane. It is manifest by the potency of the Supreme Lord. However, this it is rooted in aversion to the Lord. Its branches are said to face downwards, since according to the law of karma, all species of life from the highest to the lowest branch out from it. It is known as an aswata tree. The word aswata means ephemeral, or that which does not remain in the same state for even a day. Yet it is, it is endless in the sense that it constantly appears in the natural flow of cause and effect. The leaves of the tree represent the fruit of verses of the Vedas, Karmakanda. As the leaves of a tree nourish and beautify it, these verses similarly encourage and illuminate the world. The external potency of the Lord, Maya, is eternal, and it manifests this world. Yet the world itself is perishable inasmuch as it again becomes unmanifest. Although the fruit of verses of the Vedas provide its nourishment, their underlying purpose is rather to enlighten the conditioned soul to take shelter of the Supreme Lord, who is transcendental to the mundane. Thus, one who knows these fundamental principles is a knower of the true essence of the Vedas. So, we can understand from this example that the tree is growing with its roots above and its branches below. And this gives us some indication because where we will see a tree in that sense of its roots, roots above and its branches below as a reflection, for instance, in a lake, we will see the roots, roots above and the branches below. And it will give us some idea that what we are seeing is, is giving us a rep, uh, an understanding of the nature of this world. It is said here that it's growing, this tree is growing in a sense in aversion to the Lord. It's, it's growing away, the branches, the roots are above, everything begins from that the nature of the connection with the, with the, with the Supreme, but, and yet, there is some aversion in the sense that this um, tree also indicates that the, well, from the example of Maya, that we can understand the nature of this tree is Maya's, Maya's eternal, but the, the, uh, that this world is, is coming manifest and then unmanifest and then again manifest. So gives us the nature of the ephemeral quality of, of, of this world in which we're living and yet something of, of the nature of Maya. So Marvin, so it's like the whole world is like the tree? Yes, the root of our, yeah, the, the world is being compared here to the tree. Uh, and and the situation of, of people in this world, that they are, uh, it says that nourishment coming from the Vedas, and it, here Guru Mars mentions the, the, um, the Karmakanda section of the Vedas, which will give some indication of fruit of activity, or they are presenting, Karmakanda is presenting the fruit of activity regulations for that, but really the purpose of the Vedas is to help us enable un to or to know our connection with the Supreme, because Krishna says, I'm the, uh, he says, sarvasya chaham rdisani vishto mata smriter jnanam vapavanam cha vedais cha sarvairaham eva vedyo vedantakrit veda vidj eva chaham. So he says that I'm the knower of the Vedas, I'm the, he, he, is the, he is the compiler of the Vedas, he is the knower of the Vedas, and by the Vedas he is all that is to be known. So that's the true purpose of the Vedas. But many times people think that the Vedas are giving some 
indication, karma conda of how to how to be able to regulate one's enjoyment in this material world. But that's not the real purpose of the Vedas that's, that we can understand. It is, uh, here it is says, this, this tree is known as an aswata. The word aswata means ephemeral, or that which, or that which does not remain in the same state for even a day. It is endless in the sense that it constantly appears in natural flow of cause and effect. So the, the conditioned soul's uh, relationship with, with, we can say is with Maya will, will be en endless until the, the, there's no beginning or end to, uh, to one's um, conditioned state. And at, but at the same time, we know the, the body is, is temporary, this body will end, but then another body, I will get another body as long as I remain in, in mundane consciousness, that will happen. Aras chordvam prasritas tasya shaka guna pravrida vishaya pravala Arascha mulani anusantatani karmanu bandhini manusha loke aras chordvam prasritas tasya shaka guna pravrida vishaya pravala arascha mulani anusantatani karmanu bandhini manusha loke some of its branches extend upwards as the planes of the demigods and, the, and celestial beings. Some of the branches extend downwards as the planes of the humans, animals, and lower species. And nourished by three modes of nature, its shoots are the objects of the senses. Some aerial roots also extend downward to take root in the land of karma within the human plane. Some of the branches extend upwards as the planes of the demigods and celestial beings. Some of the branches extend downwards as the planes of the humans, animals, and lower species. And nourished by three modes of nature, its shoots are the objects of the senses. Some aerial roots also extend downward to take root in the land of karma within the human plane. Commentary. Within the expansive manifestation of this perishable yet endless world, some of the living beings are nourished by the mode of goodness and they wander throughout the upper planet, throughout the upper planes. Uh, let me just see one thing. So, I just... Uh, some of the branches extend upwards as the planes of the demigods and celestial beings. Some of the branches extend downwards as the planes of the humans, animals, and lower species. So, back to the commentary. Within the expansive manifestation of this perishable, yet endless world, some of the living beings are nourished by the modes of goodness, and they wander throughout the upper planes in the ego of gods and celestial beings. Others, influenced by the modes of passion and ignorance, are wandering throughout the plains of the humans, animals, trees, and lower species, assuming the identity, the identities of those species. The shoots of the tree of this world represent the objects of the senses, sound, smell, touch, taste, and form, as transformations of the five primary subtle elements pancha tanmatra, produced from the ego of the living beings. The principal roots face upwards, inverted, indicating aversion to the Supreme Lord. Further, some aerial roots face downwards, entering the land of karma in the human plane. These represent the human's attempts, the human's attempt to enjoy the fruits of their action, and these aerial roots nourish the tree as a separate secondary cause. So you can, this example, you can see that that is uh, very difficult when one sees 
the nature of this tree, one sees that it is hard to begin to understand what is, how one's existence in this material world, what is the cause and what is the effect? Because it, 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 it just seems like it goes on and on, that the cause leads to the effect, and that effect again becomes the cause of other effects. And we, we see that there is a complexity with this tree. Sometimes we'll see, like on a banyan tree, that a banyan tree, the branches will come down and they'll root in the soil and the, 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 the whole size of the tree becomes massive because of you can't tell which the original cause is. And like that in material existence, uh, with Krishna, with, with ourselves, it's hard to understand the cause unless we come to Krishna consciousness. Uh, in the Brahma Samhita, Krishna says at the beginning, Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam, that he's the cause of all, he's the cause of all causes. But unless one, one can recognize one's relationship with Krishna, one's illusion within this world will be endless. It is said that there are two kinds of beings, Nitya Siddha and Nitya, Nitya Bada. So as long as, but the, the word Nitya means they're both eternal. As long as one remains in mundane consciousness and trying to exploit the resources of this world of Maya, one's illusion will not have an end. But then how? But it, but, but the nature of the living entity is that the the living entity is eternal. So so if one comes to the comes to Krishna consciousness, one can one can change one's position from that of being an, an eternally um, an eternally conditioned soul, Nitya Buddha, eternally conditioned, that has no, no beginning and end. But if one co comes to Krishna consciousness and develops uh, this consciousness of the relationship with the Lord, one can, one can leave that plane of Maya, but in any case, the nature of the living entity is is nitya, is eternal. So, can is that's not going to change. So go on. Narupam asneha tato palabhyate. Narupam asheha tato palabhyate. Na nanto na chadir na cha sampratista ashwatam enam subirudamulam asanga shastrena dridena chitva tata param tat parimar gitavyam yasmin gatana nivartanti buya tam eva chadyam purusham prapadye yata pravritti Prashvita Purani. In the human plane, this inverted form of the people tree of the material world is inconceivable without Vedic knowledge. Neither its beginning, nor its middle, nor its end can be perceived. From the association of devotees, one acquires the sharp axe of detachment from the mundane. Using this weapon to cut down the illusory tree of one's mundane existence, which is stubbornly rooted in aversion to the Supreme Lord, one attains to the plane of no return, which is the lotus feet of the Lord. With pure devotion, one should approach the holy lotus feet of the Supreme Lord Vishnu for shelter and pray. I surrender unto the original person, the Supreme Lord of all, by whose illusory potency, Maya, his perpetual tree, of the material world has appeared. So, in the human plane, this inverted form of the people tree of this material world is inconceivable without Vedic knowledge. 
neither its beginning nor its middle nor its end can be perceived. From the association of devotees, one acquires the sharp axe of detachment from the mundane, using this weapon to cut down that illusory tree of one's mundane existence, which is stubbornly rooted in aversion to the Supreme Lord, one attains to the plane of no return, which is the lotus feet of the Lord. With pure devotion, one should approach the holy lotus feet of the Supreme Lord Vishnu for shelter and pray, I surrender unto the original person, the Supreme Lord of all, by whose illusory potency Maya, this perpetual tree of the material world, has appeared. So here we have uh, the understanding that one, one from by associating with devotees, one can acquire the sharp axe of detachment from the mundane. With that axe, because then one can cut down this illusory tree, one's relationship with the mundane. That, that, is, that is so important to have that association of devotees and one can get a proper orientation and, and detachment from this world which is compared to an axe by which one can just end this whole illusory existence, cut down this, this tree. So it's a very good, ex very good description for us of, of how we can get out of this illusory entanglement. You may say, we say, someone may say, well, easier said than done, but at the same time, it may seem like that, but here has said you should take that at, by association of devotees when you can get the sharp axe of a detachment and then it is possible to finish with the whole thing without prolonging one's illusion within this world. By associating with the devotees, getting the proper orientation, surrendering to the spiritual master, and taking shelter of the Lord, one can one can actually, one's determined to do so, one can end one's uh, perpetual illusion in this world. Nirmana moha jita sangha dosha adhyatma nitya vinivritta kama dvanvar vimukta sukha dukkha samgyar kachanti amudha param avyayam tat Free from vanity and delusion, unloof, aloof to unholy association. Free from vanity and delusion, aloof to unholy association. Dedicated to self-realization, desireless, liberated from the duality of joy and sorrow. Undiluted, those surrendered souls reach the eternal goal. Free from vanity and delusion, aloof to unholy association, dedicated to self-realization, desireless, liberated from the duality of joy and sorrow, undiluted, those surrendered souls reach the eternal goal. So in this world, we are dealing with actually so many dualities here mentions the duality of joy and sorrow. But we are delu deluded in this material world, and we really need to be able to take shelter of, of devotional service, especially the association of like-minded persons, devotees, and then we can actually uh, end our, as it says here, uh, unholy association which we have in this world. So to end vanity and delusion, to think, stop with the idea that I'm, I'm very important and then I will base my whole material existence upon my false ego. It's really what it's talk, really what we're talking about, to become free from that illusion Um. 
natad basayate suryo na shashanko na pavaka yadgatva na nivartante tadama paramamama. The surrendered souls reach my eternal abode, never to return to this world. Neither sun, nor moon, nor, f nor fire, nothing can illuminate that all illuminating supreme abode. The surrendered souls reach my eternal abode, never to return to this world. Neither sun, nor moon, nor fire, Nothing can illuminate that all illuminating supreme abode. So gives us some idea here of what the nature of this world is. It's actually a world of darkness, world of darkness, a world of illusion. And yet we are, we are able to see so much by the presence of the sun. And the sun and elsewhere, uh, Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Param Sada Pashyanti Surya. It says that the sun is like the is the sun is like the the Lord's holy feet are like the sun. They are illuminating our existence, and we are to we are to look in to that illumination. And then also in the supreme abode, there is no need for anything to illuminate. You don't need fire, you don't need the moon, you don't need the sun, you don't need electricity, you don't need anything. That world is, is by nature self-illuminating, just as the soul in this body illuminates the whole body with consciousness. But that is the world of supreme consciousness, the presence of the Lord and his devotees, and when one doesn't need some artificial illumination. Uh, we remember, um, we remember how Gurumars told the story of a man who, who lived, who his whole life had been like in a dungeon, and then someone came to say, come to, to him and said, "Come with me. I will show you the sun." And the man was looking for something like some like a torch or a flashlight or something and and the other man said, "No for the to see the, for the sun, you don't have to ha you know won't need to use any other illumination when the sun when I show you the sun that will provide all the illumination so in when one is in a conditioned existence, one cannot imagine a world where where it doesn't depend on the sun or the moon or or fire or electricity. But that world is self-luminous, just like this. That people were searching for the nature of existence or searching for understanding of spiritual life, but they don't understand that, that the nature even of the soul, our own soul, is self-revealing. Self the soul reveals itself because we can see the presence of the soul in our body by the consciousness that exists. Okay. Mamai vamso jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana Manashastan indriyani prakritistani karshati. The soul is a particle potency of mind. Although it is eternal, for worldly existence it adopts the five mundane senses and the mind, which is the six. The soul is a particle potency of mind. Although it is eternal, for worldly existence it adopts the five mundane senses and the mind, which is the six. So these are all the uh, mundane senses, uh, eyes, ear, nose, uh, mouth, like eyes, sight from the eyes, smell from the nose, sound from the ears, uh, taste from the tongue and from, from the we can have the sense of touch, and then also the, the mind, which is 
really serving the senses and the, the mind and the material existence is, a, a ser is serving the senses. Is the mind like its own entity in some sense? Well, it would. The, 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 we've always heard the mind is the is the greatest enemy or the best friend, and we material existence we don't know what is the best. How the mind is our best friend. That's why. That's why Srila Guru Maharaj, when Govinda Maharaj came to him. Guru Maharaj told him, can you, can you follow me and not your mind? So that we, we get the idea that the mind is not really, is, is really engaged, is really there to facilitate material existence as far as our experience is concerned. The soul is a particle potency of mind. Although it is eternal for worldly existence, it adopts the five mundane senses and the mind, which is the sixth. Shariram yad avapnoti yad chapi utkramatishvara grihit vaitani samyati vayorgandan ivashayat. The soul is the master of the body. When it departs the body, it goes to another, it goes to enter another, carrying those subtle senses as the wind carries fragrance from its source. Shariram yadavapnoti yaschapi utkramatishvara grihit vaitani samyati vayur gandhan ivashayat so. That's what I'm re reading now. The soul is a particle, a po pardon me, the soul is the master of the body. When it, when it departs the body, it goes to enter another, carrying these subtle senses as the wind carries fragrance from its source. So the soul will, as long as we're in mundane consciousness, the soul will go from one body to another. Carrying these subtle senses as the wind carries fragrance from its source. Shrodram chakshu sparshanam cha rasanam granam eva cha adishtaya manas chayam vishayan upasevate Shrodram chakshu sparshanam cha rasanam granam eva cha adishtaya manas chayam vishayan Upasevate, presiding over the ear, eye, skin, touch, and nose, and also the mind, the living entity, enjoys the sense objects of sound, form, touch, taste, and smell. So the, the senses are connecting with the objects of the senses, presiding over the ear, eye, skin, touch, and nose, and also the mind, the living entity, enjoys the sense objects of sound, form, touch, taste, and smell. So the soul in conditioned existence develops in that way. It presides the soul. Um, is presiding over the ear, uh, ear eye, skin, touch, and nose, and also the mind, the living entity, enjoys the sense objects of sound, form, touch, taste, and smell. And utkramantam sitam vapi bunjanam vagunan vitam vimurananu pashanti pashanti jnana chakshusha utkramantam sitam vapi bunjanam vagunan vitam Vimurananu Pashanti, Pashanti Jnana Chakshusha. Those who are thus deluded cannot see the soul when it is departing the body. 
residing in the body or when enjoying through the senses in the body, those with the eyes of wisdom can see. So those who are in, in identification with the body, they vimuda uh, nanupashanti, those who are illusioned, those who are illusioned, they can't see how the soul is present in the body, how the soul is leaving the body, how the soul is there while one is enjoying through the senses. Vimuda uh, nanupashanti, one who is an illusion can't see those things. But pashanti jnana chakshusha. Jnana chakshusha means eyes of wisdom, one who can see through. Now, one who can see through wisdom is able to see and understand that it's actually the presence of the soul which is allowing the body to function, whether in mundane existence or whether in spirit, uh, spiritual, uh, in a spiritual position or relief beyond leaving this mundane attachment. So one more verse I'll read. Yatanto yoginas chainam pashanti atmani avastitam yatanto pi akritatmano nainam pashanti achedasa yatanto yoginas chainam pashanti atmani avastitam yatanto pi akritatmano nainam pashanti achedasa and the sincere seekers see the soul present within, but persons of poor understanding and lacking in self-control cannot see the soul despite their endeavors. And the sincere seekers see the soul present within, but persons of poor understanding and lacking in self-control cannot see the soul despite their endeavors. So, this chapter, Purushottama Yoga. So, understanding one's relationship with the Supreme Lord. Okay, here I'm going to stop for tonight and get the next reading, I guess, is on Thursday, today, Tuesday. So, continue for this chapter then. Okay. Right. Hmm. I don't see the cartels here. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe I... Well, I didn't... Oh, they're there. What? On the bookshelf. Okay. Hari Harai Nama Krishna Jadavaya Nama Janavaya Manavaya Keshavaya Nama Gopa Govinda Ram Shri Madhu Sudan Giridari Gopinata Manana Mohan Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Advaita Chandra Gharadana Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Rupa Sanatam Bhakta Raguna Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raguna Echai Gosai Kori Chana Bandhan Jai Tevignana Shamishka Puran Hey, 
Shai Gosai Jamui Taradas Kasabar Parai Numora Panchagas Parikara Shishi Guru Guranga Gandharvika Giri Dari Joki Jai Jai Om Vishnupad Paramansa Parabhajaka Chari Ashta Tata Sada Shishi Maj Srila Bhakti Nirmavachari Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnupad Paramansa Parabhajaka Chari Ashta Tata Sada Shishi Maj Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnupad Paramansa Parabhajaka Chari Ashta Tara Sada Shri Srimad Srila Bhakti Rakak Srila Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Bhagavan Srila Bhakti Sunanda Saraswati 
Goswain Thakur ki jai, jai Om Vishnu Paj, Sri Lagor ki Shorda Babaji Maharaj ki jai, jai Om Vishnu Paj, Sri La Sat Sri Dhananda Bhakti Benal Thakur ki jai, jai Om Vishnu Paj, Vaishnava Sarvabhama Sri La Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj ki jai, Rupanuga Guru Bhargat ki jai, Namachari Sri La Harida Sakur ki jai, Sri Rupa Sanatana Bhatta Raghunashi Jiva Gopal Bhatta Dasha Raghunashi Goswami Prabhu ki jai, Prem Sigo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadan Har Shri Vasudhi Shri Gaura Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Vishvabharanya Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada ki jai, Ananda Koti Vaishna Vrinda ki jai, Sri Navadip Dham ki jai, Sri Dham Mayapur ki jai, Saparshada Sri Nityananda Prabhu ki jai, Saparshada Sri Man Mahaprabhu ki jai, Sri Koladvip ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Acharya Vrinda ki jai, Sokel Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Sevasham ki jai, Ganga Devi ki jai, Tulasi Manarani ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Shri Vrindavan Dham ki jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Gopi Govardhan, Sham Kuna Radha Kunda Kalindi Yamuna Jo ki jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai, all the assembled devotees ki jai, Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Jai Om Vishnu Pashila Bhakti Pavan Janardha Maharaj ki jai.